your friendly neighborhood YouTuber is rated PG-13. Parental advisory, explicit content, viewer discretion is advised. What's up everyone? It's your friendly neighborhood YouTuber guys and here we are man. We are back with another vintage review. This time we're taking it all the way back to 2001 with this masterpiece right here. It is from Stan Winston's Stan Winston Creatures Mutant Earth and we have Crippler right here. Just look at the detail on this magnificent piece man. Um, I've, I've never seen this much detail, um, in a, in a, a toy, um, action figure since, uh, McFarlane, man. So, this is the first Stan Winston figure that I will be reviewing on my channel. Of course, I have many more. Here on the back are some of the other figures you can get from this wave. I do have this guy, Horg, which I'm going to review, um in the near future. Um, I want to pick up all these figures, man. I think they're really, really dope. Uh, I do have other Stan Winston figures, but not of Mutant Earth. Um, but man, this guy is on perfect, perfect, perfect card, dude. So one thing I'm probably going to do is I'm going to break out my blade right here and probably cut the bottom of this because I want to preserve the card because this is just so beautiful. I sell them preserved cards. I think the last card that I preserved was probably the Grey Hulk. And I preserved his card. I don't know why. Maybe because I felt like if I reviewed him, I wanted to, I wanted to put him back in the case and display him on the wall. Maybe I might do that in the future. He's on my toy shelf right now uh, being displayed. Uh, for those who don't know who Stan Winston is, he created some of the most epic uh, creatures in cinema history. Of course, Stan Winston is now no longer with us. Um, one... Uh, if you guys are not familiar with Stan Winston, one of the uh, creatures that he created, the one probably the most popular creature, uh, creature that he created, try saying that five times fast, uh, is actually Predator. So he created the Predator suit, and also I do believe he uh, he created a um, uh, to Harry from Harry and the Hendersons. He also created some other uh, creatures that I, which I can't. Uh, it's not off the top of my head. If you guys know, Google it. Leave it in the comments. I'll pin it to my page. Okay, so here is the little story on Mutant Earth before we uh, unpackage this package, before we unpackage this toy. The year is 2099, five years after the Great Alien Invasion. The future Earth is a landscape of desolation where hideous mutants and, and invading aliens fight for domination over the planet, but one man stands strong amid the rubble. He is Track, humanity's last hope. So there's Track right there. That's pretty dope. Okay, guys, uh, this series is a, is special in that we are introducing a great new character, Track. Uh, there's Track right there. He's okay. We are we already know that, and we already read up on that. So here are the art artist uh, sculpted. I want to tell you who sculpted this piece because it's a beautiful, beautiful art piece. Uh, sculpture and paint design by Andy Schlonberg. For some reason, that name sounds very familiar. If you guys know, leave it in the comments because that name sounds familiar, man. Packaging concept, design, photography, and art by Jim Charmatz. Charmatz. And like I said, this is from 2001, guys. So uh, I'm gonna fast forward to this already being unpackaged. It's gonna take me. A, it's gonna be a pain in the butt trying to cut this thing open at the bottom. Cause and plus, he's a big freaking figure too, man. He's probably about eight inches. So let's fast forward to that, let's get him out the package, and let's do a review of this masterpiece. Okay, so here's Crippler out of the package, man, and man, he is just absolutely beautiful, dude. I mean, if you see him on camera, I mean, you have to see him in person, dude, because I don't think the camera is showing uh, as much uh, detail. Well, it's not the camera's not giving much justice, should I say. 
Um, so yeah, I was able to preserve the card. Let me move Crippler off the way. So here's the card. I cut him out from underneath. One of my YouTube buddies uh, gave me this idea where you just cut the box underneath and then you pull them out from underneath and then you preserve this right here. The Crippler card, I'm probably going to leave in there. Um, it looks good. Collector's trading card. It comes with an ex uh, exclusive trading card. Mutant, Mutant Earth trading card. So yeah, and you just cut the bottom and then pull them out and then... We preserve this beautiful card. It's not damaged. It's not tore apart. So if you want to, you can put them back in the plastic, put them back in there, and maybe just throw some tape on there just to tape it up. And then you can put them back on display if you want to, which I'm kind of up in the air. I don't know. I like my characters to be free and on display because if you leave them a package, they just take up too much room. So let's take a look. Before we take a look at um, Crippler, let's take a look at his weapons, dude. And look at this magnificent freaking gun, dude. Dude, it looks like a super soaker, super soaker nerf gun. Uh, pff, man, alien weapon all mixed into one, man. The detail on this thing is just immaculate, dude. And it's has some pretty nice weight to it. I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty pretty nice. Has some pretty nice weight to it. Right here is where all the weight is to some pieces are hollow inside. There's the front of it. Look at that, dude. I love that. And do any of these things come out? No. I love how these two missiles are firing out right here. That's dope, dude. Love it, man. Damn, that's awesome. And here is uh, this thing, which the name eludes me at the moment. I know what it is. It's just it's just the name eludes me. But it, he comes with this magnificent piece right here. Mallet. Is it mallet? Is it mallet? I think it's mallet. Or something similar to that name. But here, we'll just call it mallet for the time being. I always get my stuff wrong anyways. Beautiful, beautiful piece. And... Let's take a look at Crippler, dude. Let's take a look at this freaking guy, dude. The detail in this guy is just amazing, man. Not amazing, amazing. The hand, the pants. Look at that, dude. Look at his feet. Here's the base he comes with. And he is a heavy figure, too. I love the gravel and the sand. The legs, the back piece. I love this right here. I'm guessing this is probably for either for his gun or for this thing right here. It has to be for this thing, right? Or you can put it right here. Put the gun right there. I'm guessing maybe. Hang it right there. That's my only guess. <laughs> There's the back of him. There's the side. Look at these spikes, dude. And these spikes are kind of like a hard plastic. Be careful of that. I just love those spikes, man. That face, man. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so let's check out the articulation on this guy or the lack thereof. So, uh, if you guys were to buy this figure and take him out the package, my uh, advice, heat this guy up before you start moving him around. But I'm an idiot, so I'm not going to heat him up. Uh, being that he almost, he's been in the package almost 19 years. So, there is his arm. So, he can get his arm to move up. Same thing with this arm. So I'm going to take him off his base real quick. Waist swivel. Somewhat. I wouldn't force it. Like I said, warm it up. Legs. Move nicely. No knee bend. So essentially, one thing that this guy has in common that um, he has in common with uh, older McFarlane figures, specifically Spawn McFarl uh, McFarlane figures, is that he is an articulated statue. I mean... This, these were the things back in the day, man, especially in the 90s, even though this guy's 2001, this is what you got. This was your action figure. Um, this was your action figure. Legs, arms move up and down, legs move back and forth. That was pretty much it. That was the articulation that, we, that you were going to get back in the day. A lot of us weren't focused on articulation as uh, a lot of us are focused on it now. But uh, for the lack of articulation this guy has, he... The detail more than makes up for it, man. I mean, and if you look at this detail, it rivals a lot of the figures that come out today. Even Hot Toys, man. Um, I mean, I don't collect Hot Toys because they're a little bit too pricey for me. And they're a little bit too big. And 
And uh, I like my plastic, plastic figures, man. You know what I mean? I'm not really too deep into cloth figures, even though I do own a few cloth figures. Love it, dude. And he is, he has some really, really nice weight to him, guys. Okay, so let's put this weapon into his hand. I'm guessing he has to hold it like so. Let's see how well this weapon goes into his hand. Oh, okay, nicely. It's designed nicely to go into his hand like so. Of course, he holds it at an awkward angle because... Oh, yeah, Dimension has wrist swivel too, barely. But, yeah, he holds it at an awkward angle because I don't think you can get his arm to turn. Maybe you can. Oh, yeah, you can. You just got to get it to warm up. Okay, so, yeah. Um, Let's see. If you squeeze it into his hands, yeah, he can hold it pretty well. But he holds it awkwardly just simply because of the design of this figure. And he doesn't have a break here. It looks like he has a break, but it doesn't. Um, he does have, I think he does have a break here. Yep, he does have a break here at the, uh, forearm. So if you want him to hold the mallet, which we will put the mallet into his hand. And with, when you're opening a lot of these older figures, guys, shit. Uh, remember, be gentle because these are all older figures and they will break on you. And if you guys are accustomed to watching my reviews and look. Did I? Oh, wait. Okay. I was, like, I was like, did I break something? Holy shit. If you guys are accustomed to watching my reviews, then you know how many toys, old toys, vintage toys I have broken on my channel when reviewing them. So that's how easy it is to, re to break these figures, man. All right. We got the weapon in his hands. Let's go ahead and put him back on his base and see how he looks, man. So, yeah, this is pretty much how I'm going to have him post because there's really no other way. Awesome, awesome piece, man. Awesome vintage piece, man. If you guys are toy collectors and you're looking for awesome vintage uh, figures, I'm, that's how I'm going to lean it because he needs a little leverage right here for his gun to hold him up a little bit because he's kind of tipping over. But yeah, if you guys are looking to collect vintage toys, man, Stan Winston is a genius. He was a genius of what he did. And to have this guy in your collection, I think it's just... It's just it's just awesome, man. To have this guy in my collection is just awesome, dude. I love collecting new things, even though it's older things. And not so many people know about this uh, lineup, this series of action figures. And that's the great thing about being a toy collector and a toy reviewer is, you know, you review figures that people haven't seen before or, you know, gems. You know, this is why we go to comic book shops, right? You know, to find stuff like this. And, you know, these figures are not really, not really easy to find. So... To find gems like these today, you know, 19 years later, and not too many people know about these figures is really, really awesome, guys. All right, let's do some comparisons, and I'm going to give you my rating on this figure. I think you guys know where I'm going with them. So here are the two last figures that I reviewed, dude. Um, one, a newer figure. One, uh, an older figure. Uh, this right here is uh, one of you guys um, correct me in the comments. His name is not Chimera. It's Camara, like Camaro, Camara. I, I kind of knew that it, it's because it's been a while since I played the video game Resistance, but there is Camara, Advanced Hybrid. That was my last review, and here's the my newest review of Spawn right here. Uh, not Spawn, of uh, McFarlane's um, Marauder figure from Doom right there. He looks much. He looks a lot like a Spawn figure, so that's why. But yeah, man. I mean, look at the detail compared to today, dude. So this is the McFarlane. You can see that they kind of belong in the same kind of family, right? The detail is very, very much the same. Of course, this guy is very mo more articulated, but I think <sighs> this one is more detailed because obviously you can see the more wash there's more washes over him and there's more wrinkles and and more crevices you know where the detail is at you know like every part of his body is really well detailed and filled in very nicely no, nothing is left out where if you look at this marauder figure a lot of the green armor is just very plain yeah i know it's trying to stay true to the character but there's really no wash over this green you know what i mean compared to this guy where you can see the wash and you can see um, the detail 
more in this figure. And that's with a lot of the older Spawn figures too, not to take away from McFarlane because McFarlane was known for doing that detail, even though he's still doing that amazing detail today. That detail is a little bit more clean. Uh, Crippler head, I forgot to mention, can move, but is hindered by his ponytail right here. So essentially, this is a statue, guys. A beautiful, beautiful statue. So on that uh, alone, I'm going to go ahead and give this guy articulated statue review. I'm going to give this guy... I would love to give him a 10 uh, because he's right up there with him. Uh, because he's right up there with uh, being a 10. Let me measure this guy before because <laughs> I forgot. Uh, yeah, six and a half. Okay, because I thought this guy was bigger because he looked bigger in the container, but in the package. But yeah, he's about six and a half. Going all the way up to his spikes, he's about seven and one fourth. So that's about how high he goes. On his base, on the base, he's about on just a little under seven inches on his base uh, going all the way up to his spikes he's about seven and a half inches so I was a little bit off I thought he was more like eight inches but uh, he's a big figure and he's heavy too so I'm gonna give this guy a solid nine I think he's really really awesome the detail is amazing the paint apps are clean are beautiful are vibrant Still, over all these years, he still holds up with a lot of the figures that are being released today. He is just a true, true, true masterpiece, man. If you're asking me how come I'm not giving him a 10, well, because I've seen other beautiful figures. Um, I have a lot of cool spawn figures as well that maybe rivals this guy, but hey, a 9 out of 10 is pretty, pretty damn good, man. And he is a true, true masterpiece. Um, I really love this guy. I got a feeling he's going to grow on me and I'm going to really, really appreciate this guy over time because as you can see, time has been really generous to this guy. So they don't make figures like these anymore, man. They really don't. Really, really awesome piece. Tell me what you guys think of this, uh, Crippler. I had to look over to the right and see his name on the box again. Crippler. Tell me what you guys think of this piece, man. Do you guys like this Mutant Earth uh, lineup? Stay tuned. I'm going to do some more reviews of uh, Mutant Earth and more Stan Winston figures because I think they are brilliant, dude. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Give me some good vibes. Send me some good likes. Send me some good comments. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section, guys. We'll go ahead and leave it at that. I just want to thank you guys for watching this amazing review. I appreciate all of you. We'll go ahead and sign off. Just want to thank you guys for watching in. I'll catch you guys in the next review. Peace out.